All right, guys, today we're doing the Bergara rifles, B14 HMR and 308 and 65 Creedmoor. We're gonna be banging out close to 500. Gonna be cool, mm -hmm. check it out. Buckle up. America! That is a Bergara B14 HMR. Uh, it comes, well, well, part of the HMR is that you get the um, adjustable cheek weld in the stock. Uh, this is a Vortex Strike Eagle 5 to 25. Uh, it is in MRAD. It's a first focal plane scope. Uh, I did add a Timney trigger, and this is an Atlas bipod, and this is a discontinued Dead Air Sandman TI. Uh, this is for the scope in the rifle. It's under 2000 bucks to get into long range. Uh, the scope has tracked pretty well thus far. I was a little bit wary about buying something that was such a bargain, but for everything that I've done thus far, at least it's held up pretty good. So I'm, I'm, I'm satisfied with it. All right, mine is an unrattle canned factory B14 HMR and C65 Creedmoor. I'm running a Leupold Mark V HD with a PR2 uh, reticle uh, in MRAD. So the scope uh, is, is probably the most, not probably, it's definitely the most expensive part of this gun. The scope's a couple thousand bucks, and then the rifle's about $1,000. So this is probably a $3,000 rig just because of the glass, and I've got some really nice worn rings on here, uh, so those are like 150 bucks a set. Uh, but uh, he, like I said, he's in 6.5 Creedmoor. They're threaded, all of them are, all the B14 HMRs. Grant explained how the HMRs all have this cheek piece. Uh, they have various models that are different from simpler stocks to chassis systems. But all in all, in my opinion, Bergara is the best out of the box rifle, especially at that price range that you can pick up. So I guess what we'll do is, is we're just gonna ping around. So this video is us basically finding our are dope or finding where we need to hold to hit at certain distances. We're out in a field, I'm 100 yards from, from one berm, and then uh, it, it goes out to about 160 and then about 260 and 360 and 460 out there. If I back all the way up, I can get 500 yards, but we're, we're running about 460. This wouldn't really be considered long range shooting by the long range guys, uh, but it is a good entry to make sure that you're able to hit with your rifle and stuff like that. You want to hit those red ones, dude. Let's tag those red ones on the right. All right. Those so, are what? Uh, we're going to like... start running at 160 here. We know we're pretty much zeroed at 100. Uh, so we're going to try to bang these guys. I'm going to have a little bit less drop. I'm running a 6.5 Creedmoor, if we hadn't mentioned that. Uh, he's running a 308. Uh, he's painted his gun. That's why his looks different than mine. Mine is the factory finish. Uh, and, you know, we can make fun of spray paint guns if we want to. <laughs> but... Uh, you know, there's a lot of debate out there in the world on whether that's cool or not. Uh, I fall into the camp of I don't like painted guns. Yeah. Uh, and, yeah, the and, gun range, the range is divided straight down the middle. Yeah. It's, uh, it, it separates families. It does. <laughs> but this man here paints everything he gets. So the <laughs> so first thing we're going to do here is try to squeeze off at 160 yards. See what happens. These guns are zeroed at 100, so this shouldn't really, uh, for either gun, this shouldn't make a whole lot of difference. So I am going to squeeze, and I'm shooting dead center of the large right target. And it might help if I take it off safety. All right, here we go. Dead center, far right target, and squeeze. A little low. Yeah, so that was about probably a quarter mil low and slightly left because this gun seems to be shooting a little bit left today. Squeeze in the center. That's beautiful. Yep, there she goes, dead on. Not a big surprise uh, that it's gonna be pretty close because uh, it's not, there's almost no drop in a 6.5 Creedmoor at 160 over 100. Might be a little bit, inch or two. There he goes. Yeah, same spot. Yeah, I think got I'm a actually. half mil hold, bada bing and bada boom, baby. All right, that got it. Let's move on out to 260 and see what happens. All right, uh, so off camera, I squeezed one off here at the 260 to see what would happen. 
uh, it looks like I'm about a about a, a mil low. So what you can do, or what I did, if you're new to this, what you can do is you shoot and you remember where you were aiming at, but you can look in your scope at where the bullet actually hit. And then that will tell you how, how low it is or how much you need to hold over. So in this case, it was one mil low. So if I'm wanting to hit dead center, uh, then I can either dope this up a mil uh, to, from four to five, or I can hold over in the scope. Uh, hold over means pulling uh, the, the, the hash marks in the scope up to where it's dropping. Because not only are mil radians for judging how much things are dropping, but they can also be used to measure as well. I think uh, it's you can important read up to know, on that on the internet. I, that'd be a whole video on that alone. So it's important to note with that that that's where a uh, first focal plane scope comes in handy, right? Yep. So like if you're zooming in and out with a second focal plane scope, you can only use those hash marks as a measuring tool if you're at a certain magnification. Whereas with the first focal plane, the reticle is getting bigger and smaller as the image is getting bigger and smaller. And so what, no matter what magnification you're at, you can use those hashes for measuring. It is superior, and like he said, most of the time. Uh, a second focal plane scope is going to be fixed at a power. So you can read your manual. Frequently, it's the highest power of the scope, uh, but sometimes it'll be a fixed number like 10, for example. Uh, so that's just a little bit of, a little bit more information there. All right, well, you want to shoot at- uh, 260? Do a little 260 shooting there, oh, man. man. Yeah, send it. All right, well, you want me to go first? Yeah, you're welcome. Go right ahead. Sure, all right. Now there's a chicken running around on this range between 160 and 260, but I have to avoid shooting it because my neighbor next door, who I have a great relationship with, would probably be very upset with me. There she goes. Hit right where I wanted her to. Yep. That was a hit. We're all over it. What about that yellow guy? Put my plugs in a little better. I heard that one more than I had intended. Was that a miss? Yeah, just right. It was right? I think so. Well, that was humiliating. Uh, it's not a good idea. What you really need to be doing is you got to squeeze these triggers until it goes off. You have to be careful not to jerk these guns, which is you know, kind of a normal tendency. That was low and right. Yeah. That was a hit. Which one were you shooting at? That was an orange. Yeah, there it hit. Just a little low and left. Are you still shooting the big target, the orange? No, that was the yellow. Oh, well now I'm jealous. There it was. Bing bong. Bing bong, right on. I think it hit right about where I was aiming too. I'm gonna try the smaller green one. Let's see if everybody's gonna laugh at me or not. Yeah, hit. Cash money, baby. All right, that's good. Well, we're dinging at 260 fairly easily by holding over one mil. Off we go, let's move out to 360. All right, so what I'm doing here um, is we, we looked in a ballistics calculator in the phone called Applied Ballistics. It's like 20 bucks. And it said that for my round, I need to be 1.5 mils up. So instead of trying to hold over using the optic, I'm going to go ahead and dope my scope. So I'm going to twist. Uh, right now, my zero is actually at four. Now, normally what you would do on one of these You'll see uh, here that this has that this is set at four. That's where my zero is originally. What you can normally do is take this cap off and you would rotate it back to zero, but I haven't done that. So four is my zero. So I have to go a mil and a half. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna twist this thing to five and a half mils. And that, according to the computer, should put me on uh, at roughly 350, which is about where we're shooting. So we'll see where we land. Um, and, and you know how close the computer actually is okay now in this case you would just put your crosshairs or in my case a dot uh, on the target and squeeze because all of the holdover or adjustment has been done inside 
the, the actual optic itself. That was a hit. Dude, that's like right in the middle. Oh no, wait a minute. No, we, we I think we sprayed on a dot on that one. You're yeah. just on the left edge. Yep, and that's actually about a half a mil down. So I'm gonna squeeze again, and this is to, to verify my shot that I'm consistently hitting in the same place. You don't always wanna just take one round and assume that you're right, right? You could have pulled, there's all kinds of things that could have happened. Even the movement of my jaw while I was rambling might have done it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop talking now and I'm going to squeeze again. Yeah, you're all over it. Same spot. Same spot, yeah. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to crank my scope up again. And what I did was I could see my shot and I knew I had to go up. So I twisted this up another about half mil and I could actually watch the dot in my scope go down to the spot where I had been hitting. So now it ought to be just dead under. And that's the same way that you would zero a rifle. Uh, is the, My preferred method of zeroing is like aiming at a bullseye, squeezing the trigger and then adjusting my scope to the hole. I prefer that over trying to just adjust the scope and hope it comes up. I find that it takes me fewer rounds to zero because of that. All right, so one more out. I kind of adjust this sandbag to where it's holding the rifle. If I was standing up right now, I'd be having a considerably harder time hitting, but this sandbag will kind of take care of keeping the rifle steady. Okay, so here we go. Elevation's good, you're still just a little bit left. Okay, well, I'm not gonna adjust my left and right uh, because I don't really wanna do that, but. But that was money. Yeah, that was good shots. All right, Grant, your turn. Oh, that's that's a good one. Right, right there, uh, right you're, edge. you're a touch right, but I don't know if that makes any difference. I mean, really the main difference with, with like between 6.5 and 3.08 is like, if you're looking to get into long range, 6.5 flies a lot faster, which long story short means that you're gonna to have to make less adjustments with range. It's not going to shift as much as it's traveling further. Whereas with a 308, um, usually my adjustments are a little bit more drastic. Uh, the wind's gonna have a more uh, bigger effect on it. Um, it's a really good training ground. So like if you're trying to get into, and it's plentiful, so that was like another really big thing. You can find 308 anywhere. Yeah. Um, not to say that you can't find 6.5 anywhere now, like, cause it's, it's pretty damn popular, but, um, I guess I was just kind of a sadist and wanted to uh, wanted to have that wind effect. That's kind of why I went with that. Here we are, 460 yards. Yep, 460 is where we're landing right now. I added one mil of dope to mine based on the calculating, uh, based on that applied ballistics calculator. So uh, we'll see if I'm hitting or not, and uh, we'll make some adjustments. Which one? The green on the bottom. Okay. I got nothing, but it had to be windage. We'll take another shot. I do have a round in there still. Make sure that I still have stuff in my mag. Impact. Dead All center. right, where'd that hit? That was in the center, bro. It didn't hit off one side? Slightly left. All right. Helps is like whenever you're going prone, if you're asking me if prone is probably the most stable position. If I could shoot one, it would be prone. So, what you do when you're done with this is you're going to record all this stuff, you'll write it down or whatever, and you'll know what your rifle does. And that way you can make your scope adjustments on the fly next time uh, when you're out shooting. And that way you'll be able to hit consistently. Uh, it's, this game is about knowing your rifle and, and your optic.
that's, oh yeah, it's right about the same spot. There beautiful. we go. It was a beautiful day. Yeah, it was. So today's a good day. We got to come out here and run our rifles and crank them around, really get a good feel for how our optics and our rifles are working. So that's always good. Uh, we kind of talked a little bit about the difference between the 308 and 65 Creedmoor. Uh, both of them are fantastic rounds for what we're doing here. Uh, yeah, without a doubt. I mean, there was definitely like, if you're looking at the data that we were punching into the guns or like the amount of clicks and everything, both of them were mills, but my adjustments were, I mean, significantly more, right? Which basically means that my bullet's falling faster. Um, so, I mean, yeah, there's, there's more adjustment that you have to do with the 308 but uh, 7.62 has been getting it done for a while. So, you know, it's awesome. But that to say 6.5 is like, I mean, if you're looking to get into long range shooting um, and you want like a mile gun out of the box, as long as you're a, a, a good shooter and you've got a good rig, like it's extremely doable um, with a 6.5 without a doubt. Yeah, I think the, I think the 6.5 is, uh, well, I don't think, I know the 6.5 is considerably flatter. And that was really what I wanted when I was buying it for my, for my son, because I didn't want my son to have to really learn a whole bunch of holdover. And a lot of times he's hunting under say 200 yards. So uh, that, was, that was why the choice was made for this. Plus it's very manageable recall. Well, if you haven't done any long range shooting and you have the uh, opportunity, it is easily the most rewarding type of shooting that I've ever done. Um, I'm just now getting into it personally, but uh, it's extremely gratifying and uh, it's, it's definitely worth investing in. If it's something you've been thinking about, you definitely have to make the time to go out and do it. Uh, it's kind of like owning a dirt bike or something like that. Like if you don't have land or space to do it, you gotta make time to go out and do it, but it's uh, extremely rewarding and um, yeah, it's awesome. It's a good time. I've loved yeah. it. Yeah, it's a good time. All right, guys. Well, so there it is, man. Fantastic <laughs> rifles. These Vergara's are winners, guys. These Vergara's, my favorite rifle out of the box you can buy, really. For the money. Yeah, for the money, right around a thousand bucks for a rifle. I mean, it's a, it's easily a thousand yard gun right out of the box. Yeah, yep. without a doubt. If you like the video, make sure to subscribe and follow, and like and share and comment on all of our stuff. Hit the notifications bell. Yeah, yeah, dude, fire it all up. Uh, make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Thanks for watching. There's going to be more.